This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. I finally got my hands on the brand new Sony A1. This is their flagship $6,500 camera that shoots 8K video, and I am super excited to start shooting some projects with it. But first, I wanna see if my new M1 Max that are absolutely amazing can actually handle this footage. And I'm gonna be taking a look at not only Final Cut Pro, which I have the most most hope for, but also the latest version of Premiere Pro, the beta that was updated, and the version of DaVinci Resolve that was just dropped today. So we're also gonna see how these three programs perform on these new systems. Let me start out with some 8K footage from the Canon EOS R5. And because of this test footage, I never really shot 8K on that camera because it just did not play back well on any system, even my Mac Pro. Now, this footage right here isn't even the H.265 10-bit footage. This is standard footage, and as you guys can see, we're getting some drop frames right there in Final Cut. You guys see this lagging, and as we're playing, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. I wanna see how does the Sony footage, and I'm gonna test out both 24 and 30 and the different bit rates, how does that compare to this? Now, before I open up some projects, I have some sample footage shot here. I wanna also test out video stabilization, at least in Final Cut. We do a fair bit of that just because I love my footage to be nice and smooth. Even for slider shots, I love to smooth it out. And Final Cut is really quick at this, and I wanna know how much slower is that going to be? So I have this clip right here. Let me go ahead and hit the stabilization button, and I'll hit start at the same time. Now these M1s are ridiculously fast. Right there, you guys saw it finished that in five and a half seconds for a 20 second 4K clip. That is, it is absolutely insane. Let's go ahead and open up this 8K clip. Bam. I also have um, some tools opened up right here. This is iStat menu, so we can see how much of the CPU we're using, how much of the graphics we're using. And here, we're actually, we're close to maxing out an 8K, but we're not maxing out the GPU and bam, right there. So it looks like, if you guys can see that right here, 15 seconds, 0.77, so closer to 16 seconds. So we have four times the resolution, and it's taken roughly three times longer. Definitely uh, a fair bit longer, but that's still not bad. Let's start out with our standard 4K24. This clip is 8K 24 FPS at 200 megabit per second. Now that does seem kind of low, and we also do have 400, which I'm gonna test, so double the file size. But with this camera, you can only shoot 8K in HS mode, meaning it is all H.265, and it is also all 10-bit. You cannot do 8-bit footage with this 8K, which, that might be a good thing if it, the system can edit it, but it might also be a bad thing if they're not giving us an 8-bit option that would be easier to edit. So before I hit play, let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. 2021 is gonna be an amazing year for us video creators, but you have to make sure that you have your website ready and looking good. You can build a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a custom template and customized blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, it's affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in tons of traffic thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So if you need a website or you need to update your old one, go ahead and start a free two-week trial with no credit card needed by going to squarespace.com slash or by using the link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, guys, let's go ahead and see how this footage plays back. I am very excited and also a bit nervous. I hope it plays back well. I wanna show you that I'm starting off in the better quality mode, meaning we are actually pulling the full AK file and displaying it on this display, which you don't really need to do. That's kind of overkill, but let's go ahead and test it out. I am pulling from the internal SSD as well. Let's hit play. Okay, how's that look so far? It looks pretty dang smooth, okay. And let's take a look at our CPU, GPU usage. CPU, the M1's only at 11%. Graphics is about 63 to 70% or so. All right, let's go ahead and try the tougher footage. This is also 10 bit, but 400 megabit per second, so twice the bit rate. Let's hit play. 
Would you look at that? Oh my goodness. So you guys saw how that Canon R5 footage, not even 10-bit, the 8-bit Canon R5 footage played back. And this Sony footage, in at least in Final Cut, is playing back way better. If you're shooting and you're editing in Final Cut, as long as you don't mind the extra file space, it looks like we're not really seeing a difference. So let me switch to the color board and let me just pull this down a little bit. And I'm just gonna pull it back negative 10 just so we keep it consistent. And let's boost up saturation by 10 just to give it a little bit of work to do. And let's see if this ends up killing it or not. All right, so we're playing back. GPU usage is a little bit higher, but barely. And it's playing back perfectly smoothly. Look at that right there. You look at the time code. All right, wow. This is doing better than I expected. Okay, let's do the same thing for the 400. Also looking quite good. Wow, okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at 8K30. Maybe 24 it could do, but possibly 30 it won't be able to do. Doesn't look like there are any issues. You guys take a look at that. Wow, I was just tracking this truck. Oh, you guys see right there, right when it's switching between the two clips, we got some glitchiness. So that's the 400. So it might struggle with the 400 megabit at 4K30. Still pretty dang smooth. I might see a drop frame or two, but now it's smoothed out. So basically at the start, it was where it struggles a little bit, especially on the 400. You guys see the skimming is not that smooth. So it is choppy until it catches up. Let's go to this toughest clip. I'm gonna add that effect once again. And it is still handling this quite well. Wow, that is impressive. All right, so I do wanna show you guys. And so this basically is playing back, I believe a 4K version. Looks like our graphics usage is still similar. So it looks like with this tough footage, it doesn't make that much of a difference when you're in the better performance mode. Let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro. Let's start out with the easiest clip here. I am in full resolution, which is overkill, but let's go ahead and hit the space bar. I'm seeing some audio. Audio and video is out of sync. The video literally hasn't even moved yet. Okay, well, you saw a jump right there. It jumped to almost the end. The frame hasn't changed whatsoever. That is not good news. <laughs> All right, we're in the second clip now. Literally, the frame has not changed. All right, let me hit pause. That is a whole different experience compared to Final Cut. It's still trying to stop. Oh, it updated some of the old clip, not even the new clip where it's been at. Let me go easier on it. Let me go to a quarter of the resolution. All right, well, it actually started playing back that time. We saw some glitches at the start, and then it smoothed out. And to be honest with you guys, looking at the footage, it's a little bit less sharp than 8K, but still dang good. Now we switched over to the 400, had a little bit more glitchiness, and then it smoothed out as well. Up oh, some more glitchiness. So for the 400 is definitely tougher, uh, especially in Premiere Pro, you notice a bigger difference. You might wanna stick with the 200, especially if you don't have a ton of motion. Let's go ahead and try an eighth, since this is 8K on a small screen. Oops, glitching up the start. Video and audio is out of sync. Gosh, it. It looks worse than the quarter resolution. It's playing back worse. Definitely I'm seeing aliasing um, that's gonna make it tougher to judge focus. Very interesting. Let's go to half. All right, so glitchiness at the start like before, but it's not really going away. It looks like a quarter is a good usable option. Now let me go ahead and open up 30 frames per second. And, oh no. It's not really smoothing out at all. Okay, well, I definitely don't have hope for 8K30 at 400 then. Yeah, look at that, all choppy. If you're working with Premiere Pro, you wanna shoot 24. 24 at 200 megabit per second at quarter resolution, and you will be able to edit this footage, but not really anything else. And then, of course, let's just go back and add some effects. All right, guys, I have some bad news. At least this beta version of Premiere Pro has crashed on me three separate times. As soon as I wanna do some color work, it is a no-go. I don't know if this is just a bug or if it just can't handle the footage. If you're working with Premiere Pro, I would probably hold off a shooting 8K for now unless you want to do proxy footage because it just won't stop crashing on me. And finally, we have the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. This is an 8K timeline, which is once again overkill, but let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna hit spacebar. 
and choppiness, way better than Premiere Pro, and then it smoothed out as well. Now, if you look at the CPU and GPU, similar to Final Cut, but the choppiness at the beginning was definitely more significant than in Final Cut, and it just bumped over to the 400, definitely struggling more there. It's not really smoothing out, so we could definitely tell that the 400 megabit per second is tougher. Now, I wonder if I'm gonna go ahead and move around in this playhead. All right, it's not, well, I don't, I don't wanna say it's not horrible, that's <laughs> pretty bad, but I guess it's usable if you had to make it work. Let's go into our timeline settings, and let me go ahead and switch this to a 4K timeline, and we'll see how that does. Maybe that gives us a little bit better playback. Let's hit play. <laughs> that is so weird. It still is basically the same. Now this time, the GPU usage did go down. That means that once you start adding effects, color grading, you have more headroom. Now let's take a look at this 400 footage. A little bit of choppiness, and then it smooths out. Let's go ahead and open up 8K30 timeline here. We are set to 4K timeline here. Let's hit play. There you go, actually. So that is looking pretty dang smooth. We're not dropping frames after that initial. Yeah, we just get about a half a second of glitchiness, which is unfortunate, but we are editing 8K footage on a $1,300 laptop here, unplugged. Let's just add in a little bit of contrast. Uh, let's go ahead and push up the saturation since it's a pretty flat image here. I do have my LUTs, so let's just put in my standard one. Let's hit play. All right, yeah, so the GPU went from about 45% to about 68, and that is with some contrast added, some saturation, and a LUT thrown on, we still have plenty of headroom there. So if you're a Final Cut editor, no problems. <laughs> if you wanna drop the money on this camera, you can edit 8K and it's gonna do great. Whereas the Canon R5, even the compressed 8-bit does not work. So good job Sony with that codec, giving us great detail and uh, some footage that's actually editable. Now, if you're a Premiere Pro shooter, I don't know if they'll ever get to it, at least within a year or two. So if you wanna shoot this kind of 8K footage and edit it, you'll probably want one of those 5600M 16 inch MacBook Pros that costs about four grand. If you guys need a website, once again, go check out Squarespace. It is an amazing platform. I've been using them for years, recommending them for years, even before they were a sponsor of the channel. Uh, and you don't even need a credit card to try it out. We have links down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.